Welcome to another in a nutshell edition of Civil's Brettspiele. My name is Niels and today we are talking about not dice. Attention, this is a deluxe version. So there's a base version and a deluxe version. This is a deluxe version and the difference is simply the number of dice. In the base version you have 18 dice, you have this token and in the deluxe version you get an additional 18 dice. You only need that if you play it with more people. Uh, and no of this cloth bags. You get the rule book, you get the 18 dice and you get the tokens in the base version and if you order the deluxe version you get all of that here on top. However let's talk about what this game is all about and let's take a closer look to this dice. First of all these dice are cool because they are individually created. Take a look at that here. Is that really looking cool? The structure, the screen structure, oh, nice, or isn't it? Okay, but what is it all about? It is a knot, a Celtic knot. So what you're trying to do is building Celtic knots. And these uh, dice here have open ends. So the, to the top there is this one going up as an open end. But yeah, as you can see, to each side it's an open end. And if you see this one here, that has only one side, the right side that is open. If you put that on here, you close that knot here. If you play that one here and that one here, as you can see, you are closing even more. Now you have only one, two and three open edges. If you put that one here, you have only two and so on. This one is a little bit of a stretch that doesn't really help, but let's say this and that would be now a completed closed Celtic knot. And you're usually trying to do this in a game. However, this game, Not Dice, is not really just one game. Technically, it's 12 different games. It comes with two rule books. This one means games, and there are 12. I repeat it, 12 different versions of games in it. I show you one in a second. And on top of that, you have also solitary puzzles, seven different puzzles. In some puzzles, you simply try to have a grid like this here, and you try to even by swap them like this here, two dice on their positions, not changing the direction or the side, just swapping positions. You try to make the perfect knot. The other option is you take a complete row and put it on the other side. Uh, that's the two options and you try to beat your score from a previous round by just completing this knot. That uh, is a little bit of three-dimensional thinking. A couple of people like it, a couple of not. I really uh, always like three-dimensional thinking so for me it's a perfect game. Uh, if you wanted to make it a little bit harder, there are rules in it for make it a little bit harder, then you have a 4x4. Four four. But wait, that's not all, because it's getting even more nicer. Sometimes you are building three dimensional cubes, like this for an example here. Boop, boop, boop. And now, uh, it's very hard with one hand, and now you have to make it on three different sides. So this must show a perfect knot, this side also, and this side also. So three sides must show a perfect knot to complete this puzzle. That reminds me a lot of Rubik's Magic Cube. So that is a little bit of puzzle. For this one you don't have any rules, you can rotate the uh, dice, whatever you want, but finally you will have to make this Rubik's Magic Cube here out of not dice. That is cool, that's a cool puzzle. Now I wanted to show you one co-op game. There are cooperative games in it and also games that are competitive. 
In another game, this game for an example, you take two dice and roll them. It's up to three persons. Then you put it to the side. Next player is taking two out of a bag or just from a stack. Let's assume you only have the basic. And then the third person. Now you roll a third dice. So technically you can roll three dice. And now you try to build a combined knot. So you're bringing out one into the middle. Then this person is bringing one into the middle. And the third person is rolling a die and bring one die into the middle. So you play that uh, uh, until you not can or will not place the die. Then you can burn it and sh simply discard it. However, at any time when you have three discarded dice, you will lose the game. On the other hand, if you not do a completed knot, and this one is obviously not a completed one because this is illegal. This open knot goes into a. I show it to you, in a blocked side. That was this would be legal, but this is illegal. If you are not making uh, at least fifteen dice, fifteen of these knot dice in a complete, completely closed knot, you are losing two. So the goal is to make fifteen dice or more, up to eighteen, in one complete, completely closed knot. Then you simply score and it simply uh, place dice minus the longest line. In this case, let's assume I completed it like this. So then I used 17 dice on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 17 minus 7 is a score of 10 points. You have a little bit of a scoring track in it and can uh, take a look if you are good or bad. That is another one a game that you can play with up to three people. If you have the deluxe version, you can play it with up to four persons. And that was just one game and two puzzles I showed you. This game has a lot of variety. But let's always talk about, like in a nutshell, about my personal experiences about not dice. When I got this game, Honestly and fair, I really ordered it, so I wanted this game and wanted to try it out because I think that's exactly my um, cup of tea that's right up my alley, these games. I like the 3D puzzles, I like Ubongo and games like that. So this is a game I really like. Mm, I'm not a fan of rolling the dice, so that's something I'm not the biggest fan of, however, I really figured out when I opened the box and I started to reading the rule books. Um, yeah, well, this looks cool. Let's try it out. And I tried out one game. I tried out another game. Then I lost a couple of times. I tried it out again. And I looked to my clock the next time and uh, the first two hours was gone just by nothing. And I wanted to show you the rule book just and to start the game, you only have to read until here. That is actually the second game. So this is one game on a double side, and this is the introduction, and here is just a, a little index. So I read one, two, three pages, and then I started and played two hours, and I had a blast. Wow, that was just a complicated thing to do. And I tried to figure out how it works and what do you have to set aside. Is it good to uh, set aside singles or do you blocking yourself out? Or is it good to uh, uh, set a, uh, to aside knots with two open sides and two closed sides? And I figured out, or is it good to have this four ones open here? And I figured out, wow, that is really intense. That is a lot of fun you have with this puzzle game. So I immediately, after the first two hours, started to, hey, then let's make a puzzle. And I flipped all over the first page, read the first two uh, pages, technically only one page here. The second one is just examples for set it up. And I figured out, okay, I solved the first puzzle in six, uh, puzzle in six turns. No, not a big deal. Is six good or not? I question myself. Six? Hmm. What is six worth? Is six good or not? So I looked online and I couldn't find any 
web page to uh, describe if six are good or not. I mean, you can track it down. There's no real space for track it down in this rule book. That's a little bit of a shame. There should be a sheet of paper in it or in this rule book. So what is your personal best score or whatever? So maybe another little book where you can track down your personal score or a web page or any other resource to check if six is good or not or what is the optimized move. Only the number would be at least good to see, hey, this is how you solve this puzzle. Because if you cannot really figure out how you solve a puzzle, well, then you wanted to try it again and try to be better. But if you cannot find a way, you should have at least a knowledge which is good or not. Anyway, again, back to my point. I played the game Not Dice four hours in a row all by myself after I read a couple of pages. And honestly, how cool is that? How cool is it if you open a box, you get a game, a new game, you buy a new game, and the first thing you are doing is playing four hours in a row. Wow, that was a good feeling. Yeah, I just wanted to give you my personal opinions as, as, as always in a nutshell on not dice. And I can only say, wow, I had a really good time with playing these games. 12 different games is a lot of, there are speed games in it where you have to try to be faster than your partner. These are the competitive, there are uh, co-op games where you have to try to make a big nod out of it. And if you don't have a partner, simply play the puzzles or even try to solve the co-op as a solitaire game. If you are a big fan of abstract dice games and trying to solve puzzles like Magic Cube from Rubik's, then Nerd Dice is exactly what you want. Thanks again for watching Cyril's Brettspiele. My name is Niels, in a nutshell with Nerd Dice from Black Oak Games and see you next time. Until then, bye bye.